Hey guys, it might only feel like a week, but it's actually been a month since we've talked to the camera. Court and I have actually been out of town for about a month or so. We visited some friends and family, worked an event, and now we're back. And it feels really good to be back, but it's pretty apparent that winter's almost here. When we left, the highs were in the 80s, and now the highs are in the 40s. So we have quite a few things we'd like to get done before the snow falls. This episode is going to be centered around our solar system because there are some things we have been ignoring. In the summertime, we had so much sunshine that we were able to ignore these trees. But now that the days have gotten shorter and the clouds have gotten grayer, these trees have become a problem. We can't ignore them any longer, so step one to our winter solar prep is to take these trees out. You look like a lumberjack. You guys, we're gonna start with this tree right here. And we want it to fall that way. Not that way. If this goes the wrong way, it's definitely breaking all of the solar panels. Here we go. It's like instantly brighter down here. I can just tell that it's brighter. A lot of you have recommended that we weld a hook on the back of the bucket, and I completely agree. We just haven't had time to do it yet. This one's being stubborn. It's tangled up in this one behind me and I just can't get it to go over. I've been hammering on these wedges as hard as I can with my little ax. I just can't get enough on it. So I went and I grabbed them all and hopefully we can get it to come over. Okay, slightly reckless plan created out of desperation. I'm gonna do a two in one. Okay, hey you guys, while Riley was cutting that tree down, it dawned on me, there's probably an app that shows me where the sun is. So I found this app. Oh, cool. Look at how cool that is. Let me show you, I, luckily I did it before you cut that tamarack down, look. Look at what that tamarack was doing. It was literally shading our panels at, at two o'clock. two o'clock, like which is prime like time. primo time. And those other trees were definitely shading us at one o'clock because they were over here. That's awesome. So we need to decide like, is it even worth? Well, I definitely think it's worth those two, but is it worth that one? Because it'll be behind the hill. Yeah, this is really cool. I'll put a link to this app down below. It was like seven bucks, but totally worth it. A torch and a camp chair. This is my favorite time of year because I am a pyro. I love burning things. I love cleaning things. Cleaning up our forest, I get to burn things and clean things. We still have more trees we need to take down, but I think it's getting too late. We should start the fire and then hopefully we can just throw more trees on top. <laughs> throw more trees on top. We've tried a lot of different ways of starting fires. We've tried diesel, we've tried gas. This is my favorite way. It involves a leaf blower and firewood. Just a while. 
No tools left behind. Don't try this at home. Riley's now falling the trees directly into the fire. As usual, we started the fire way too late, so now we're gonna be babysitting this most of the night, but I think we have everything in it that we needed to burn, and that is a good feeling. I was seriously skeptical of this cordless chainsaw, but its silent and instant power has made it my go-to. That means instead of carting around a gas can, I needed a way to keep it charged during a full day of use. But that doesn't mean that bigger is better, and I wanted the right-sized equipment for the job. EcoFlow recently released the River 2. Building on the success of its predecessor, the River 2 is perfect for charging cordless tool batteries, camera gear, and phones. It's a great solution for a portable power station under one kilowatt hour, and it's the most affordable product in their lineup. It's less than eight pounds, charges in as little as one hour, and with 11 output ports, it can put out up to 600 watts. That's a lot of chainsawing. And even better, it comes with a five-year warranty. Just like all of their products, the Smart App makes it easy to monitor and control the device from our phone. And after a long day of chainsawing, you can charge the River 2 either with the AC wall adapter, Type-C USB, 12-volt car, or solar. And with the 110-watt portable solar panel, we can even keep the River 2 charged up while we're out and about on the property. To learn more about all of EcoFlow's portable power solutions, head to the link below. And thanks again to EcoFlow for sponsoring this video. Good morning and welcome back. Guys, yesterday was so productive. It felt incredible to be outside working with our hands. We got all of the trees that were blocking the panels not only taken down, but all the slash burned. Check it out. There's like, there's no longer a bunch of trees in the way of our solar panels. <laughs> One of our next projects is that we have a problem with our solar panels and that's that when we tilt this array down into its wintertime tilt, it gets really close to the ground and any snow that slides off of the array is gonna pile up in front of the panels and cause a problem. We left it this way so that we'd have plenty of room to work around these panels as we set all this up. But now that we're done with the setup and winter's coming, it's time to get this sloped away from the solar panels and make more room for that snow. This is turning out to be a lot more difficult than I expected. I thought I could reach up from below, but the excavator can't reach that far. And from above, the solar panels are in the way and I don't want to break them. So we're just going to do our best. The transfer tank is empty. Our fuel cans are empty. The excavator is empty. I need to run town to get some fuel before we can finish this project. However, it's the weekend and the place we get the red dye fuel for the transfer tank is closed, so I'm just gonna go get 20 gallons and keep this project going. Back in business. The good news is that this is the sunniest day we've had in over a week, and our solar panels are currently charging at 8,200 watts, which is so awesome. Our batteries had kind of been flirting with about 50% for the last week with the overcast days, and we're already up to 64% charged now. And it's noon. Hopefully the sun stays out the rest of the day because that would be a good feeling to see these batteries get fully charged. <sighs> I found that taking the flexible hose off these cans and just replacing it with a pipe nipple makes them work way better. The sun decided to come out and it's the perfect time to test out the portable solar panel that comes with the River 2. Oh, and we're charging. 
We've decided to go ahead and tilt the panels right now. I think it's actually gonna make more room for getting the dirt out of the way. And then we'll get to see if our input changes with our changed angle. Step one. I didn't explain this very well when we first built this array, but the winch doesn't actually support any of the weight of the panels. All of the weight is supported by these three telescoping legs. The winch just helps us to adjust it so we don't have to lift as much weight. Step one is to undo the bolts that are currently supporting it. Okay, right now before we tilt, we're making 8,196 watts. Riley's gonna crank and I'm gonna watch, go for it. It just went up 100 watts. It just went up 200 watts. It just went up 300 watts. <laughs> Are we stuck in here? 8,800 watts. So that's 600 watts better. So we gained like 8% efficiency. That is so cool. That's awesome. <laughs> out of, now we have to come out of the tunnel. Wow. And now you guys can see why after tilting these to winter angle, we really need to slope this away so that the snow doesn't build up right there. I forgot how big this solar array is. <laughs> it just seems so much bigger now that I'm like standing next to it. Gosh, who made that smoky mess down there? All right, guys, I think this is gonna work. Stay tuned, we're gonna get this all sloped away and then we're on to our next thing. Those of you that have been following our channel for a long time are gonna like this next part. You've been asking, what happened to that old diesel generator you picked up? Well, here it is, and we finally have a use for it. When we first picked it up, we just put it up here out of the way because we had no idea where it was gonna go. But now we have a home for it, and it's time to get it moved into place. But that's gonna be a little tricky. As I recall, this thing is super heavy, so this might be a little precarious. I'm just remembering that when we unloaded this off the trailer, the excavator couldn't actually really pick it up. It could kind of hold it. So far, so good. really have a plan, it's more of a let's just see what happens kind of situation. He says he's gonna just try driving up this. It's really steep. Crazy. So that the steepest thing you've ever driven up? No. Don't tell me it's that. It's the steepest thing I've ever driven up on camera though. <laughs> this is my idea of a great Saturday. I don't know that this is Courtney's idea of a great Saturday. If by this point you're starting to wonder why the heck we're doing this, I am too, but the theory was that by putting the generator on this side of the container, it'll serve as a sound block so that we don't hear the generator from the house. did an amazing job. It's exactly where we wanted it, but now he needs to get the excavator down the hill again. Going down is always sketchier than going up. Crud. 
This is the first. Stop! I feel like our life has gone full circle back to the beginning of the summer, and our equipment is on a hill, and the track is no longer on it. My gut reaction in a situation like this is to just start doing whatever I think I need to do to fix the problem as fast as possible, which in this case I thought was to back up while turning a little bit and push the track back on, but I ended up actually making it worse and pushing the track off. And now we're up on this hill in a terrible spot and uh, we have to try to get this pet track back on. I don't know. I think the next step is to watch some YouTube videos about putting tracks back on excavators. I'm sure it's similar to the dozer, but I feel like if we can get past a little bit of the learning curve. We can get this on a lot faster than if we just start doing stuff. Okay. All right, Courtney found a good YouTube video and it appears to be pretty much just like the dozer, just a lot smaller and hopefully a lot easier. I don't want to jinx it, but he, the guy just like propped it on with a tiny little crowbar. So he wasn't on a cliff though. Step one is to release the grease tension out of the cylinder that tightens the track. Ah. Okay, it wasn't that tight. Did I get all the way out? I don't know. Okay, the next thing we need to do is get the weight off the track so we can slip it into place. So Riley's gonna swing the bucket around and try to pick up so that there's no weight on it. Okay, stop! That was scary though. That it slid? Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely some grease that came out. Yeah, this is not, this is not a bulldozer track. Oh my gosh, wait, is it on? <laughs> Almost. Just need to get it up and over this. Okay, here's the plan. Courtney's gonna inch it forward while I try to pull it up and over the idler. This track's off the ground. She's only gonna drive this one and I think it's gonna work. Okay, are you ready? It's back on. Okay, the track is back on and now it's time to hopefully get this excavator down the hill. I will celebrate once it's off the steep hill. Today was long and a little bit of one of these, but we were able to get both things crossed off the list that we were hoping to get crossed off. I'm really looking forward to getting that generator all hooked up and ready to go. It's gonna be a nice peace of mind knowing that we can both use it to charge our system if we need to in lack of sun or use that as a backup in case we need to do maintenance on our system. We're gonna call that good for today. The rule is that whoever breaks the equipment buys the other person dinner, which means that I get a lot of dinners. <laughs> That's it for today. We're gonna to eat some dinner and we'll see you tomorrow. morning guys it's a lazy rainy morning here on the homestead we've got a fire going the dogs are hanging out we just got word that snow is in the forecast for this week i think that means that winter is officially here maybe but i thought this morning would be a fun morning to keep trying out the river too because riley read you guys all of the specs on it but i thought it would be fun to actually test it and see what can it power and what can it not power so we start our mornings around here with coffee and i want to see if it can grind our beans
that is impressive. And now we have coffee grounds. Stand by, we're gonna make some coffee, drink some coffee, and then head downstairs and keep testing this thing. Our coffee has been drank and it's time to go figure out what else this thing can power. I love how portable this thing is. I can just like carry it one-handed up and down the stairs. There's no way that I could do that with any of our other portable power stations. I think we should test out my corded sander. You guys, that is so cool. All right, you guys, the third test is the one that I'm the most excited about. I bought a handheld paint sprayer because I have a few painting projects coming up that I'm looking forward to doing. And it'd be really cool to be able to take this way far away from the building to paint stuff. I looked into getting cordless ones, but they were really expensive. So if I could pair this with the River 2, it's kind of the same thing, right? Let's see. I'll be impressed. <laughs> Obviously there's no paint in it, but let's just see if it can even. Whoa. No problem. Yeah. Okay, but I need your guys' help on something that has to do with the paint sprayer. I am so tired of staring at this bright white door and before the weather gets too cold to paint, I wanna get the door painted. So I need your guys' help because I've nailed it down to two color options. Pottery Urn is the top one and Wheat Penny is the bottom. Let me know down in the comments below which color you think we should paint the door because I think that's gonna happen next week. Courtney says pottery urn and I say wheat penny. There is still one more final test that the River 2 has to pass for it to be approved by me, so stand by. Most important thing in the whole shop. These are my heated socks. Moment of truth. Okay, it's Courtney approved. <laughs> is that your new favorite garage gadget? Well, yeah, yeah, may maybe because it powers all my other favorite gadgets. Welcome back. Today's project is to hopefully get this military generator tied into the Victron inverters inside of our solar shed so that in the event that we don't make enough sunshine during the days this winter, fire up the generator and charge up our batteries. This is an early 1980s military MEP 004 three-phase generator, but we actually got this from some friends of ours who were using it on their homestead over in Montana for years and years, and he actually converted it to uh, split phase 240 power. I think the first step is to see if we can get it to fire up. I started this up when we first got it here to the property, but that was now almost a year and a half ago and I haven't touched it since. First step first, open it up. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. Oh, there's instructions. Pre-start, okay, starting. Crank the engine by placing the stop, run, start switch into the start position. Whoa! <laughs> Guys, this thing, I haven't touched it in a year and a half. I thought for sure the batteries were dead, but it just cranked over. It's gonna start. Oh my gosh, it fired right up. That was pretty exciting. It took me a minute to remember how to uh, how to get power running to it, and it was just that I didn't hold the start button long enough, so it didn't energize the coil in the generator. So I wasn't getting power there for a minute, but what I was trying to show you at the end there was that you have to manually adjust the throttle to change the RPMs of the engine, to change the speed that the generator runs at, to change the frequency of the power. So here in the US, we use 60 hertz power, 
So I had to manually dial it into her at 60 hertz. Then I came over with a voltage meter and I confirmed that I was getting uh, 240 across two of the legs, 208 across two of the legs, and then uh, 119 from each leg back to the neutral. So it is three phase, so we do have the 208 leg. I'm not gonna be using that leg. I'm just gonna be using the two 120s and uh, combined together, those also make 240. I also bought a whole bunch of materials for this sort of complicated um, breaker box that I thought I was gonna have to put on here because I didn't realize that it actually has a circuit breaker built in, but it does, so I don't need to do all that. All I need to do now is run wires from this generator over into the inside of the solar shed and hook them up to the inverter.